bikes anytime, anywhere. Don't be caught off guard, make sure you prepare. Hurricane or quick or tsunami. Fire and flood threaten your safety. Danger approaching, pay attention to the warnings and advisories. Your essential life, dumb spot and ready. So you won't be scrambling in an emergency. This message is brought to you by the Department of Emergency Management. Good day and welcome to another edition of Real Talk in the Face of Danger, a podcast brought to you by the Department of Emergency Management. I am your host, Marcus Myers, and today we're going to be delving into a very interesting and intriguing topic, the role of emergency services in tourism. We have a full house today. Uh, but right now, we're going to start off with two of our guests today. Today, we are here with Ms. Gail Paris. She is the Operations and Marketing Manager at the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association. And we also have Mr. David Ford. He is the Operations Manager at Courtyard by Marriott Bridgetown. Hello. Hi. Hey. So this is a very interesting topic, and I want to start off with Ms. Paris first. Uh, usually, when we talk about tourism, we talk about it as it being our bread and butter and it's on the tip of every Bajan's tongue, and we all have our opinions about it. Some of them uninformed, but still opinions regardless. But we never really speak about it in terms of emergency. So when you hear emergency in tourism, I may think about it as like natural disasters, but how would you define emergency for this conversation? Emergency, well, the definition of emergency varies. So yes, it could be a natural disaster, it could be a man-made disaster, it could be an accident, or it could just be a simple medical emergency. And within the tourism sector, obviously, we have to be prepared for any eventuality that occurs with tourists, because obviously there are guests, and we want to make sure they feel at home. So should anything happen to them, no matter what it is, we always make sure, the various properties always make sure they have officers or staff on board to help the guests. So whether it's providing them with medical assistance, providing them with consular assistance, guiding them towards that, or then guiding them towards the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., which is the association responsible for marketing the destination and the visibility of the destination, we know where to guide the visitors to make sure that whatever the emergency is, we can assist them in handling. So it is, it's basically a, a spectrum. It could be yes. something that could be you know, an individual kind of emergency, or it could be something that's more widespread. More widespread, that's correct. OK, so what do you think many people may get wrong that you see happening when it comes to emergencies in the tourism space? This is not only with locals, but visitors as well. I can't, say, think, I can't think of anything that may go wrong. I think people just generally, in an emergency, they panic. So they may not respond you know, immediately or quickly as to what should be the best thing to do. So I think that would be it. But I can't say that I see anything going wrong. Okay. And I know if it is an emergency that happens on property, you know, the first thing we encourage guests to do, obviously, is to go to the front desk and report it. And just like at Courtyard by Marriott Bridgetown, they would have the necessary officer or necessary team to handle the emergency. Obviously, you want to keep the guests calm and then you follow the procedure depending on what the emergency is. Right, and that's a good uh, time to bring in Mr. Ford about that and, and how Marriott would deal with these situations. So when we speak about it from an organizational perspective, when it comes to emergencies, how do you prepare for that? Well, Marriott being a global um, leader, we have a lot of policies in place to really cater for different sets of emergencies. If there are medical emergencies, we have a setup where our property alone always have first aiders on site. And that comes 24 hours. That is where we will have each department having someone going through the first aid training to ensure that an event of any medical emergencies, we have someone to, as Gail highlighted, calm the guests down and then move into our procedures accordingly. Now, again, it varies on the type of emergency. Emergencies can lead down to guests thinking they're having a heart attack. You know, there are some choking. There can also be slip and falls. So we have set up in our mandate how to deal with each and every one 
of those type of emergencies. And just so I'm clear, when it comes to, you said uh, first aiders and first responders, are those persons that are specifically um, first aid trained or are these staff members who also are first aid trained? Well, staff members that are first aid, first aid trained and our, our setup is one of all of our security officers are first aiders. All of our engineering team, first aiders. Management team also are all first aiders. But then we specifically look at our shifts, our schedules, and ensure that there is a cook on hand, a lead cook, a sous chef, that are first aiders as well, so that in the event, as they said, anything happens, someone is close by to ensure that we have that response time down to a minimal. I'm sorry, we're going to add to as well. There are also many properties that either have a medical, have medical person, like a doctor on board, especially high-end properties. They may actually have a doctor that's on property or they have a doctor that they can call on a dime in the, in the event of a medical emergency. There are also some properties that may also have psychologists, for example, on property. Because you know, as he said, you can have a guest who may think they have a heart attack or have a heart attack. You may have guests who may drown on pool. You may have guests who may actually die on property. These things do happen, God forbid and they always have to have persons on call in case of emergency. So some hotels do have psychologists on board or bereavement counselors on board to handle any of those eventualities as well. So how do hotels determine um, what their team would comprise of? Uh, uh, whether it be they have a, a doctor that would be there full time or whether it be the first, the first aid responders, how do they determine, or even a psychologist, how do they determine for their um, uh, property? I think it depends on the size of the property. The brand, because some brand has specific requirements and specific guidelines, and then it may depend on the nature of the guests that you may have. So you may have some, let's say, a very high-end property who has what you call high net worth individuals. You want to ensure that you always have persons on board to handle any eventuality. Because obviously the risk of not having some person to respond, you know, is very, very great. You may not find that now at a smaller property, because obviously they may have a you know a lower budget operating with a lower budget. They may have different types of guests on board. It really, really varies. And as, a, as he may be able to explain from a Marriott brand, they would have specific guidelines that they have to follow. And I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm brainstorming in real time, but I'm thinking that um, an all-inclusive property that where you always have access to, you know, alcohol and, you know, food and you can eat all, everything that you want and that kind of thing, that can increase risk in some way as well. Yes. That is, actually, that is what I'm thinking. Yes, it, it, it actually can. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and again, highlighting the main, the main thing as is brand. If your brand is an all-inclusive brand, you, yes, you will find that that will be one of the requirements. As, as I said, as per Marriott, you would want to make sure that our guest is taken care of in event of any situation. So when, when you talk about alcohol, when you talk about varying restaurants with different um, food offerings, there, there would be the need to ensure that if there's not a nurse in-house, you know, that there is a doctor on call, and then there are also a response team. And it may not be an in-house response team, but an external response team who, again, would be designated to service that, those properties. As we were uh, speaking uh, before we started recording, you were speaking to about the breadth of your preparedness strategy, right? Right now we're talking about medical emergencies, but you've also done the Carib Wave uh, preparedness strategy as well. Can you give us a bit uh, of information about uh, Carib Wave and what that is and why it was important to do it? Well, Carib Wave 23, that was the tsunami testing in the Caribbean. And that is a, a, a end of the DEM where they, um, I'll say, expand their knowledge, making sure that the Barbados leg of the emergency response teams are prepared for any eventuality of a tsunami. We took the opportunity being uh, again, international brand, over 8,000 um, hotels, 138 um, countries. 
we took that opportunity to partner and get involved in this exercise because we not only say as a know-how to help our guests in the event of an emergency, but we looked at it for our associates, our staff, getting them fully up to speed, knowing you never know, next two, three years, they may migrate in Jakarta and there is a tsunami alert. What they learned here at the courtyard by Marriott Bridgetown through the DEM comes fully into play. It would have been one of those exercises for us that we really, really embraced and got fully, fully intertwined. The excitement in doing this, this simulation was one of something I haven't seen in a long time from our property. And, and uh, specific to the visitors, how did you get buy-in from them for them to take part as well? Well, I, I can say when we did the initial blast, we had flyers all around in our lobbies. You know, I would have communicated to some of the guests as well what we were intending to do. And I had about 10 to 15 that coming out of Trinidad, Port of Spain um, courtyard. They were a little disappointed of the timing because they would have not been on property when it would have occurred. But our in-house guests, they embraced it. They got involved. They wanted to know the time. They wanted to know if there was any specific um, locations that they had to meet in reference to, to start this simulation. It was just now communicating to them how our procedures go, which is you hear that alarm go and follow our wardens. We, what, we, what we do is that we created a situation where we had floor wardens and they were directing persons to the evacuation routes. And during that route then we would have had other wardens then moving all of the evacuees out of the property, up to Hearts Gap, onto the safe zones. So it was really a smooth transition and having the guests involved, as I said, that then brought a little more enthusiasm out of our associates. Our, our staff really then wanted to not only be a part of it, but wanted to show our visitors, we got this. Yeah, yeah. We got this. I think it's a good opportunity to also test your response mechanisms yes. to see how well your teams work because a lot of the properties also have safety and security committees who respond to any emergencies. So doing that exercise helped you to make sure that your staff, they knew what they were supposed to do. And then you could do a review of how the actual operation yes. went. So we saw the little loopholes you could then fill in. So I think those exercises that the DEM you know, organizes, they're kudos to them for doing those exercises. So is this uh, something that is widespread from, from, what, you, from what you see uh, at the BHT, at, from that vantage point, this is uh, something that is done every year yes. with, with, with all the hotels? Well, DEM would usually contact the BHTA and then we would disseminate the requests. We would explain to them what the activity is, what their requirements are, and then we encourage them to participate. I mean, they don't need many persons to part, many entities to participate. So Courtyard participated one year. I think the previous year may have been the Mango Bay group. They may have participated on the West Coast. So you get different properties to participate in. And as I earlier said, one of the benefits to me of participating is for you to test your response mechanism and then fill in the gaps where it needs to be. And I have your, st because once your staff keep doing it, then they get to realize, well, this is how we're supposed to respond in the event of emergency. Right. You only know when you actually physically do it. When it's just on paper, it's not the same. Correct. It's yeah. definitely not the same. So it's a, good, it's a good exercise that DM definitely participates in. Well, okay. And, and how, how, is there any difference in the procedures that I know of just being a, a, a local, you know, a layman, yeah. you know, walking the streets, just a layman, you know, yeah. not at any really nice hotel like, like the Marriott. But is there any difference in the procedure that you would go through with them than for someone that is not uh, situated at a hotel or living at a hotel for a period of time? Um, I would say no, because the, the whole idea is to sensitize you not only at the hotel, but again, 
uh, holistically your homes. Again, give you the opportunity, like one of the, one of the learning curves for our team was vertical evacuation. And, you know, when I brought that to the team, they were like, what's that? You know, and I went in then to explain through Damien, uh, representative from the DEM, exactly what it entails and how we can achieve it. So then relaying that to some of our guests, you know, they were thinking, hey, so that means I could be in a, a five-story um, Marriott in England and we have a situation we just need to move to the top again that's where the sensitization comes into place very interesting so when you say vertical evacuation you mean you would stay on property but you're trying to get to the highest point on the property that's right that's right and and then get and to to facilitate something like that you you have to ensure that you have all of the necessary things in place because remembering if you're going to go vertical you still have to ensure that there's food there's water there is medicals so everything has to be in place going up to ensure that a vertical evacuation is successful and that was one of the biggest takeaways from our courtyard team where that was concerned that's definitely a night opener um and it makes perfect sense and I did not think about that before as well. That's very interesting. Yeah, really utilizing, taking advantage of the height of the, the um, hotel yes. space. Very interesting. This episode was brought to you by the Department of Emergency Management in association with the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, as well as the Courtyard by Marriott Bridgetown. For any questions or queries about tourism, you can contact the BHTA via their website or give them a call. Thank you.